any warriors in the house today? All right, I hope everyone is a warrior for Christ, and we're going to jump right in on this second uh, message in this series. You know, sometimes it's hard for us to uh, just think about that warrior designation for God. Sometimes in a society, especially like now when we are leaning so far to the grace side and to the mercy side because we don't want to understand that God cannot allow sin in heaven. He cannot because He is a holy and righteous God. And some people think that we can just do whatever we want to do and just kind of ease our way in there because we will be forgiven because He is love. However, we forget that part about repentance and about turning the other way and going in the complete other direction of sin. And therefore, we have to understand that we serve a holy God who has made a way for us to inherit the kingdom of all kingdoms, heaven for eternity through His Son. He's made that way for us, but we have to accept it and we have to change. Amen? You can't say, I got it, I'm in, I'm going to keep living like I want, and I call it up when I want to call it up. Not how it works. So when we think about that aspect of God, we understand that we do serve a mighty God, an amazing creator, an unbelievable Savior who is a warrior. So this morning, as we uh, look at that in Zephaniah 317, it says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. The mighty warrior who saves. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name, Exodus 15, 3. So we need to know that that is the case. Isaiah 42, 13. The Lord will march forth like a mighty hero. When we get in a bad place, when we get in a bad way, who do we want to call on? Superman's not going to show up. Batman is busy in the cave. So we know that mighty hero is God himself through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen? The Bible tells us. It says he will come out like a warrior full of fury. Full of fury. Man, that's the kind of God I want to serve. That's the kind of God I want to serve. As men, we come to church and, and we're supposed to uh, be feminized just a little bit. We're supposed to play nice and be nice, and this is where we learn to be nice. However, that's not God's plan. He wants men to man up and be men and follow Him and be warriors from this day forward. Amen? Amen. Not walk around in some, well, I, I have some faith and, and it's in God, I just... I hope he will come through. He is God of the universe. Act like it. Act like it. And if you truly believe that he is who he is, then why are we not leaning on him? Why are we not allowing him, like last week, to move in an unbelievable way so that I don't even get to come up here and share anything? Because he already did all the sharing. He already did all the working. He already did all the life changing. Not me. Not the band. So let's act like it. Jeremiah 20, 11. The Bible says this. But the Lord stands beside me like a great warrior. Before him, my persecutors will stumble. They cannot defeat me. Hear that. They will fail and be thoroughly humiliated their dishonor will never be forgotten. Man, that don't get you jacked up. I don't know what to tell you. He's already won the victory. So why is all this so important? Because if you believe that God is a warrior God, you are more likely to believe that because of what he did for you, you are a warrior also. And if you believe you are a warrior also, then you face life in a whole different way. You face life with a whole different attitude. The most famous professional athletes, the most famous CEOs, the most 
uh, successful businessmen in the world. They didn't get there by not believing in themselves, not believing they could do it. And many of them did it on their own. Can you imagine if you put your attitude in a positive place serving a warrior God and believed in Him to be your hero, what would happen in your life? What would happen in my life? It would be completely changed. Completely changed. Many people succeed when others do not believe in them. But rarely does a person succeed when he does not believe in himself. Herb True said that. And some of you folks who like these movies from a while back will love this quote. The successful warrior is an average man with laser-like focus. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. So what if we... What if we took our laser-like focus and we did something with it? God sees you as a champion. He sees you as a mighty warrior, whether you see yourself that way or not. He wouldn't have given his son on the cross for you if he didn't expect something great for you and from you. I believe he believes in us way more than we believe in ourselves. I believe he has more confidence in us than we would ever admit. Because we want to say, well, you know, I, I don't have enough money. I, I'm not smart enough. I didn't finish school. I didn't get that degree. I didn't uh, take that job I should have taken. I didn't take that promotion. I, I'm just really, I don't know the Bible inside out and upside down. And I, I just, he, he probably couldn't use me. You know, Gideon had a similar response. He said, you know, I'm, I'm from the poorest family in town. I'm not really the guy, the popular guy. I'm not really your man. And the angel appeared and said, hey, God's got a plan for you. He felt weak, but God saw him as strong. He felt unqualified. God saw him as the man for the job. He felt insecure, but God gave him boldness to lead the people and win the victory. And you heard that God gave him. What if we allowed him to give us what he desired? You see, sometimes we get in the way. We block that by our own actions. We block that by how we live. We block that by not allowing him access to us because we want to handle things ourselves. We don't want to accept his power, we want to use our own, except I want that power because Jesus said my strength is made perfect in your weakness. I want to be weak enough that I need perfect strength from him. Amen? But pride gets in the way. And we want to, we want to handle it. We want to take care of it. He wants a true warrior. I read a story this week that absolutely blew me away about Alexander Prokhorenko who was a Russian soldier special operations <clears throat> and he had been on a mission to fight ISIS with some special operations soldiers. And he's married just a few years ago. His wife's expecting their first child. He's 25 years old. And in March, as sometimes is the case in special operations, you are way outnumbered. And things had gone wrong. They had accomplished a portion of the mission, and then he found himself alone, surrounded by all these ISIS fighters. He found himself alone knowing what would be sure death and being paraded around. And he didn't want that. 
So I want to read you what he did, or actually what he said. He found himself surrounded, and he said this by radio. I don't want them to take me and parade me. They will make a mockery of me and this uniform, he said. Conduct the airstrike. He said, I want to die with dignity and take these who would kill me with me. He said, this is the end, Commander. Thank you. Tell my family and my country I love them. Tell them I was brave and I fought till I could fight no longer. And he called in the airstrike on himself, surrounded by all those militant fighters. Wow. That is sacrifice. That is saying there's a bigger mission than me. What if, as Christians, we said, there's a bigger mission than me, and I want to be involved in the battle daily. Sometimes we come home from work and we're tired. Sometimes we come, across, uh, you know, come home from work and we're tired, and we may have things that we don't want to do. We may have people that we don't really uh, want to take the opportunity to share with that you know God's calling you to. Maybe we don't want to get in the fight on the front line. That Russian soldier did, and he overcame it all. He paid the ultimate price, but warriors overcome. Warriors overcome. We overcome these things in our lives that some seem like they're this big, some seem like they're this big, but we overcome. We can't do it alone. It is through Christ and Christ alone. But he desires that we be Warriors for him. Just like he faced, we will face evil in this life. We see it all around us now. We will face those things that are just bad. And they affect us in so many different ways. And we can get run down and we can want to give up. But God wants us to keep fighting. You know how you're through serving the Lord? You will breathe your last breath. That's when you're through serving the Lord. If you're a follower of Christ, that is it. It's not when you decide, well, I tried church. Well, I got mad at the church. Well, I left the church. Well, I'm, I've done that for years. I'm tired of church. When you draw your last breath and you are in the presence of the Lord, that is when... You're through serving. That is when you're through battling on this earth. Not until. Not until. So we have to keep fighting until we overcome. Psalm 46 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. That's where our help comes from. That's where our strength is. Understand that when we are in the midst of something, we can and will overcome. 1 John 4.4 4 says this, But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in the world. Now, just let that soak in a second. I don't know if we have any English majors in here. But if it says you have already won, does that mean you're going to win? Or is that past? Past. You've already won. That means you're already going to get the victory in what you do. Because the spirit that lives in you is greater than any spirit that's in this world. It is greater than anything you will face. 
And even if it costs you your life, it's still not going to win. That's the deal. Even if it costs us our own life, we win as warriors for Christ. We overcome because it is greater. What is in us is greater than what's in the world, and we forget that. The world wants to kick us around, beat us around a little bit. We forget that our spirit is greater because of what Jesus has done. And that's why God doesn't see us as ordinary. He sees us as extraordinary. And the possibilities in our lives, the potential, the dreams he's given you that you won't act on because you have some fear. The things you need, know that you need to do, you won't do because there's a little fear. Listen, he doesn't want us to be ordinary. He wants us to be extraordinary. He wants us to go out and change the world. One at a time. But not be satisfied. Last week was amazing. But if we talk about last week... For the next 40 weeks to finish the year out, what will we do in the next 40 weeks? Zero. We won't get anything done because we're like, whoo. That's what we did. That's what he did. Whew. What if we expected something more? What if we believed as Romans 8 says, we are more than conquerors. What if we truly believed that and lived it every day? Man, the promises of God let us know that we're going to be okay because warriors overcome. Warriors run to where the battle is. Warriors run to where the battle is. They don't fold up and hide and cower. I was talking with a friend of mine yesterday who's a minister of music, and he said, you know what? I don't understand why everything on the news that we hear is about everybody's feelings, everybody's beliefs. But the Christian voice is silent. He said, we are silent. And why is that? He said, nothing is going to change until we continue to share the truth. But if we don't share the truth, people don't know the truth and they won't come to the truth. Amen? Amen? We have to stand up and say, here's what our Bible teaches. Here's the truth. These are the facts. Yes, we still love you. No, we don't agree with what you do. Here's the truth. You are welcome here anytime, but here's what God says about that. And not worry about being intolerant. Not worrying about just being uh, some type of ugly person, monster that we're made out to be because we believe what the Bible says. Everyone else will get their say, but if a Christian says one word, we're shut down like that. And you know what we do? Rather than say, I have freedom of speech too, we go, you're right, I'll just have to pray about it. We serve a warrior God. And warriors overcome. Warriors overcome and warriors have power. Warriors have power. They don't just walk around hoping that God will do something in spite of them. They are empowered by God and they expect God to do something. Sometimes we don't have what we need. We don't get what we need. We don't go out and be a warrior for God because we don't expect God to move in such a mighty way. It is unbelievable to me 
that there are churches who rarely even fill up a baptismal. It is unbelievable to me that churches do, may go a, a year, two years, without having one person come to know Christ. I promise you, if it begins to be the norm in our church that people are not coming to know Christ, this guy will get out of the way. I do not want to be a church about us. I want to be a church about them. We have to reach people and we have to call on his power and his passion. We have to know that we can move mountains. We can move mountains. That mountain can be the one you face when you go to work, when you open your checkbook, when you come home and have to spend time alone with a spouse that you are currently having problems with, when you have to go and, and be with a parent who maybe not recognize your face, when you have to go and Sit with someone who is on a bed dying. And you maybe don't want to go. I, I just can't do that. Yes, you can. Because we have power. Because we have power. I am so thankful for those who choose to do those things daily. For folks who work in places of care. I've gotten a whole new eye-opening experience in this past week, and they are amazing. They are amazing. The people who work in hospice, they are amazing. They have a servant's heart. But they have, most of them have power that comes from on high. I've talked to so many people, this is without the Lord, I could not do this job. Could not do this job. We can move mountains. Finally, I need you to understand as I close quickly, warriors are free from a lifestyle of sin. You say, I want to be a, I want to be a warrior. I want to be yours, God. I want to be your right-hand person. I want to be the person on earth you use mightily. But I got this secret over here that, that I don't really want anybody to know about. Listen. Warriors are free from a lifestyle of sin. Now, did I say warriors never sin? Did I say that? No, you're going to sin. I'm going to sin. We're going to try to live above reproach. We're going to try to live a life that would honor God. However, you cannot live a life that would honor God and live in a lifestyle of sin that you think no one else sees. That's not how it works. James 1, 14 and 15 says, Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. There's four things you need to quickly hear about sin in this process. Step one, temptation comes. Step two, we're tempted. We're enticed by the temptation just this one time. Nobody will ever know. Step three, it's given birth in our lives and we become attached to that sin. And step number four, it gives birth to death. Completely takes us away. You see, sin will take you farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you're willing to pay. And we cannot hide it. We can't hide it. You might hide it from me. You might hide it from your neighbors, but you cannot hide it from God, and He can't bless you. He can't make you a warrior of His if you are not following Him, if you're following something else. It can be money, it can be drugs, it can be alcohol, it can be pornography, which is rampant not only in our country but in the church. I said it. Church doesn't want to talk about it. Several billion dollar industry, I believe 12 was the last I heard. 
That's more than the NFL, Major League Baseball, all that combined. You cannot live a lifestyle of sin and be a warrior for Christ. You've got to take a stand against those things that pull you in. If you know there are certain areas that you have trouble with, stay away. Call upon the power. If you're a warrior, you have power. If you're a warrior, you overcome. But you can't give it any room in your life. And finally, John 8. It says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we are descendants of Abraham, they said. We have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean you will be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. So this morning, the question is, are you free? Are you going to be able to overcome? Are you going to be able to live with that power? And are you able to live a lifestyle that is free from addictive sin and a lifestyle of sin? Because that's what God desires for you. That's who He wants to use. I don't know what God's moving you to do. But I'll tell you this. I don't know that we've ever had more trouble during setup this morning than we have in a long time. There are things going on crazy. And I believe that's because God wants to change somebody's life. I believe that's because God wants to move in your life. Maybe you've been here only a few times. Maybe you've been here for six years and you say, well, I'm already a Christian. I've already got this. Then let me ask you this. Are you connected? Are you involved? Are you volunteering? Are you in a small group? Are you serving? Are you helping? Are you ministering? Are you reaching? Are you touching? Are you sharing? If you're not, then make your way and be a warrior. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you say, I don't even understand what that means. That's okay. Make your way right down here and let someone share with you what that means. And then you decide. Whatever it is, I just pray you will be obedient to Him this morning. Because He wants warriors. Men, be men of God. Lead in your home as Christ would leave in your home. Love your wife like Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Whatever it is, you move as only you can. I, I'm believing that people need to be moved this morning. I believe our foundations need to be shaken, that our time on this earth is short. you got to make a move. You can only sit for so long. you got to get in the game. You got to get in the game or get in the stands. Warriors don't sit in the stands. They run to the battle. What will you do this morning? Father, I pray that you would move as you've not moved since last week. God, I pray this morning you would just move in a mighty and powerful way. God, you would change hearts and lives this morning. Or whatever those decisions are, I don't know them, but you do. But I pray if there is one here, one that doesn't know you, that God, this morning would be the day they come and just say, hey, tell me more about Jesus. I want to be a warrior. I've never accepted him. I've never been forgiven. I've never changed my life. Maybe it's an addiction. Whatever it is, you move them, Father, I pray in Jesus' name.